Hi guys, welcome back to OS Stuff, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a simple route and meet me path visualization tool. Hope you enjoy. All right, so let's get started about learning how to create routes. So we're going to go into Paint, and I'm going to teach you guys a bit about the types of routes. So in, when you're going in Meet Meep and you're moving, right? There are two types of movements. One is a linear movement and a spline movement. Linear movements are up and down. For example, a car moves linearly because it never, it can't straight sideways because you have to turn the two front wheels in order for the car to move uh, sideways or move into another lane. But on the other hand, a mechanum drive, which is like wheels that can strafe or move side to side, um, they can spline, which means that they can do complex movements. Imagine I'm running and there's a cone in my way. In order to get around the cone, I can't phase through it, so I have to go around it. So I spline around it, meaning I turn my body and I run around the cone. And that way I avoid the obstacle. And as you can see, I drew a little spline right here and I added this little dot in the middle to represent an object that you're running around. So now that you know what linears and splines are, now let's look into how you create routes. Essentially, these are trajectory sequences in which it steps through a sequence of points that move from one point to another. And so when you want to connect your routes, you say, okay, this is one x-coordinate, this is another x-coordinate. It's basically just like a graph. So let's now move to our, our route. We're going to want to be testing. Now, if you want your performance to be good, you're going to want to enable this flag right here. Uh, it's it's especially useful if you're on Linux, as Linux users will will need to enable this flag or else performance will not be very good. So enable this. Um, and then the next step is to go into this file right here, PowerPlay route. And you're going to start by going to where your route is. We created a point to test point test for you guys next year so that you'll be able to run uh, your route from a point to point so that you could test two points before actually merging them into your main route. We created one main route, which is called States Competition Route, which we're going to be using this as a template in a minute. And we also had a secondary route for additional testing using a function-based uh, route. That's it. And so now it's time to start creating our route. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into this route file and scroll up, I'm gonna scroll all the way up until we find, actually, give me a minute. Okay, we're here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new route. We're gonna actually comment out point to point test. And this line basically essentially tells you which route uh, you want to run. And we're gonna create a new one, right? And we're gonna call it test route. The parentheses to indicate that it's a function that we're calling a function right but obviously it's red because we haven't called the function yet so we're going to copy this as a template we're going to paste it down here and we're going to name it the same thing test route and there you go now it's good now obviously if we ran this code then it would throw us an error telling us that oh hey you never defined this or you never instantiated this route you're not you're never using this function so we're going to use it we're going to go into power play route and we're gonna copy point to point test as our template. So we're gonna copy this entire thing. Make sure I'm copying the right thing. Yes, I am copying it. We're gonna scroll all the way down until the end. We're gonna press control C to copy it, go a few spaces down and paste it. All right, so now we got our template right here. Let's, uh, make sure that our spacing is correct. It is exactly like that. So currently right now it's red because we already defined point to point test. So let's rename it. Uh, let's rename it to test route. And it should be yellow. Correct, it is yellow, which means that now we have it. Let's see what's going on over here. Something. Okay, so the solution just was a single uh, bracket. It must have uh, it must have copied an extra bracket on the end. Oh yes, because it's right here. Never mind. The extra bracket was down there because this closes the entire um, 
uh, class itself. So now that we got our template, we got to build off of this. So currently we're using a two points from last year's code. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually delete all of this, right? And by the way, you might be wondering, what is the tangent? It's the number that goes into the equation to form a spline. So what we're going to do, right, we're going to take this out really, and we're going to create our route. So currently in this test route, we're going from opposition high junction drop, right? But that's one of last year's points. We don't want to start from there. We want to start from the start point. Might be start pause, actually. I think that's the point. All right, so um, I just realized that in order to use start, we have to specify which start we want to use, which is why we have to do this dot start which tells us that we want to use the point start because there are many there are many bowls or as we call them main positions so we're going to get rid of this guy actually no we're actually not because we want a point so let's go from start to another point let's actually run to give you guys examples so we're just going to put a comp we're going to put a uh a line to linear uh hold on just dot line to linear heading which remember this is a linear uh movement and we're going to tell it to go to a random point so let's run meet me testing real quick and let me just show you guys what the actual meet me testing looks like so far it's going to go to this cone drop second adjust i'm pretty sure it's at the four point okay so yep it appears that, that it does go to a four point yes so it does a bit of a weird turn it kind of just like does a unnecessary long uh, heading change, but what we're going to do is we want to make it push this signal cone right here, right? We want to push it out of our way. We're going to push it right here. And after we push it, we want to do a curved spline movement to this four point, this five point junction right here. And it's going to do like a small little curve like this, curve around and drop here. And so instead of instead of dropping at this point right here we need to make it do uh we need to make a brand new point and we're going to call it push signal cone so what we're going to do is we're going to press control b on this point control b again and define where it's defining this coordinates and the heading the heading is the direction where the bot points we're going to scroll all the way down right not all the way down but once we find a good area to put the point right around here and we're going to say Three, um, three uh, forward slashes, and we're going to say test points. And we're going to put this new point. We're going to take this uh, point right here. We're going to use it as a template. And let's go back up to where we're finding it. We're going to paste it here. Put a few spaces. And we're going to rename this to signal column. Push signal cone. Control copy. Control B on this point. And we're going to go up. We're we'll actually just go down all the way here. And we're going to say public pose 2D, which is going to be, which pose 2D, by the way, is a point. And we're going to call it push signal cone because it's going to be the same thing that's a point. Control B, and it should take us right to here. All right, now that we got our point with our heading up to 70, let's go back to our route and paste our new point here. And if the point is right, it should push the signal cone. Push meaning, you know, it's a virtual field, so it's obviously not going to push it. It's actually pretty good. I think we're good with that. Um, I want to increase the Y a bit. Let's make it like, uh, well, let's go it's down here. Let's go 32. Let's go 32 for the Y. 32 should be good. So, okay, actually, it's going to be 32, 32. So, run it. And that's better. It's a bit too much now. So, 28. Let's try now. 28. That's good. I think, I think we're good with that. So, now that we got our point... But now we got uh now we got that we're going from a point to point. Let's create a new 
trajectory sequence, a trajectory sequence builder, right? So let's copy this and paste it down here. And instead of saying start, we're going to call this TSB or trajectory sequence builder underscore. And we're going to say drop on five point chunked. I call it junk for short junction. Paste it here. And we're going to say, we're going to actually go up here and copy a correct TSP. So we're going to go up here and copy the bottom of this. All right. And essentially, with, um, what line I'm copying, it packages up the entire trajectory sequence, it, sequence and stores it inside of a, a trajectory sequence. Um, <laughs> a TSQ underscore that we can use with the enum key to place it into a step uh, list. Um, okay, now we are going to replace this with that line and we're gonna rename this TSB to drop on five point, okay? And we're gonna rename our TSQ to the same thing for consistency. It doesn't have to be the same thing, but we're gonna make it so that it's consistent. Drop on five PT. There you go. It's obviously grayed out because we haven't used it. And so instead of saying this dot start, we gotta start from the same we gotta start from the same point we left off of, or else it's gonna throw us an error. And the end point, we're gonna actually create a new point called public goes 2D. And this point is gonna be called drop on five PT chunk. Same thing as our DSP. So we're gonna copy this point, go beyond the other one, and then and we're gonna rename it to drop on five PT junk. Then we're gonna go zero for the or sorry, twenty-three for the X. That's pretty two. 23 for the X and zero for the Y and let's go 240 for the heading. If you're wondering what this plus flip does, it actually flips the coordinate across an X and Y axis so you can put it on different start positions. Pretty, it's pretty cool. So we're gonna copy this, go back to this. We're doing speed code right now. Very efficient. All right, so we're in here. So we're going to, you can't go from one point to one point to another point again. It's going to throw an error. So um, we're going to, at this point, we're going to say drop on 5 ET junction. So, there you go. And now that should be good. If we run it. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually put this route on the, on the field. Scroll down, and we're gonna re we're gonna use the same TSQ as up here, the same trajectory sequence, and now we're using it. And we're gonna make a new enum key. So this she called us a state map, and it essentially tells the trajectory sequence what order to run the route in. So do this first, this first run, this trajectory sequence next, and it uses that enum key to run the route in a sequence. So let's. Um, Make a new enum, and we're gonna call it drop underscore on five pt junction chunk. Okay, copy it. We're gonna go back to route, right? And we're gonna scroll all the way down to the very bottom of the file. And be so, as you can see, we're already using the segment state map. Um, and that's because we have a lot of uh, other enums for multiple other routes. So what we're going to do is we're going to go right over move from start. I think this is a good place to put it. Copy this, put us a uh, comma. And let's just see if we have to rearrange this enum order. Okay, that's perfect. So 
that's good. That means that it doesn't matter what order we put the enum in currently because we only have one enum that we're even running. So as you can see, it's doing a linear to the uh, point and it's actually using the correct heading. The issue is, is we're bumping into that junction on the way down, which is not good. And now we have to employ our good friend, the spline, um, to help us with this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to rename this to a spline to linear heading, which takes it, it goes from a spline uh, to a linear heading. Um, and we're going to use the drop on five point. But now we got to specify what tangent we want to use. So instead of creating a new tangent number, we're going to actually use the heading as the tangent. So we're going to say drop on five point junction dot get heading. Okay. And there you go. Now, if our heading is good, this should create a good uh, let's see how it runs. Ooh, that's perfect. So as you can see, zero might be a bit too much on the Y because we're like basically bulldozing into that pole. And so what we're going to do is we're going to actually increase the Y by around two. We're going to route. We're going to scroll up to our points and we're going to go to where we declared our drop on five point. But we're going to increase this s y up by around two go to two let's run it and let's see what we're working with okay so that's better still bulldozing it a bit and we're gonna actually increase it to four we're gonna go even more on the x doing again it's pretty good actually and instead of 23 we're gonna actually now increase it to 24 Point five, so that we can move a bit this way. And this is basically what you're going to be doing next year. You're going to be adjusting these points a quite a bit. You're going to have to kind of get used to it. And look, it actually looks really good. I quite like it. In fact, we could probably make this first movement a, a spline to spline heading as well. Let's go to multiply route. Let's go to this start position right here. And we're going to go to push signal cone. And we're going to adjust. Actually. Uh, I don't want to adjust the point. I actually want to adjust. I'm going to make it a spline to linear heading. And we're going to use the... We're going to try to use the heading as the tangent. Let's try it again. Let's see. Let's see what we get. I mean, it's, it's okay. It, now it does run in. Um, we can try saying the tangent. I'm going to fast forward this bit of me trying stuff out. So I messed around with it quite a bit, and uh, I ended up converting the tangent to a math that's radians. And instead of um, instead of using the heading as the tangent, I actually just used my own. By the way, this right here is the start tangent, pulling this part part of, pulling this part of the tangent out, and this is the end tangent, the part uh, the part of the route that pulls this out or this way, right? And so, essentially, you're basically messing with an equation when you're changing these numbers. And so, when you're out in the field next year, doing these, uh, pulling these tangents out and working with these point adjusts, really what you're doing is you're adjusting equations that are uh, being done behind library code. So, I hope this tutorial is going to help you next year create your route. And because you already have that code uh, at your fingertips, it's going to be a lot easier for you to work off of it. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.